As the leaves rattle in breeze like bullied children, I reflect. If autumn is another metaphor, then it insists the most lovely things in this world are the ones leaving it, dying. If my life is another poem, then my little brother is a metaphor, lovely, leaving, dying. For the sake of aesthetics, we can call him November. It's fitting flesh. He has reddish brown skin, and half his heart is in a grave. In plotting his own demise, he had forgotten I would be home come December. Maybe I have been the end of him from the very beginning. It was always assumed we would travel the same direction in life, so even our mother used to dress us in synonym. He always struggled in his English classes, and I'm sure the results are related. He couldn't define himself outside of his relation to me, so it was no wonder he could only see life as a prison sentence. I used to reach my hands out in the dark hours, but I'm gone now. I only see him through telephones these days. Remember every call vividly. One in particular sounded like wrist slit and ankle sprain, the tone tinted maple leaf red, alarming, all in the way only an arson can be, my brother contracting into himself like an unspoken secret, a tender laugh caved between his cheeks, a blush surfacing like smoke, he burns for the sake of another person's happiness because he understands that you cannot be a martyr and die of natural causes. So he curves his mouth into moth wings, kisses the heat, swallows his Adderall pills with a lava flow of vodka, monk-like. He'd been squinting long enough at his prospects to make the golden twine of a noose resemble a halo. People aren't leaves despite how easily they fall. How foolish we are to consider suicide stunning awestruck by their cold and color so neither our fingers nor voices can be lifted as the falling paddles patty cake the sidewalk softly as kindergarten footsteps until the echo disappears like cheer at the end of recess. I often wonder where voices go when they fall into the ground. I'd imagine he'd say that they don't ever reach heaven. I'd imagine he'd say that he couldn't find the Lord even while he was high. I'd imagine that's the essence of depression, but he knows it. Melancholy has more mass than Catholics do. He is by far the heaviest prayer I've ever lifted. He needs help, but doesn't feel comfortable asking for it. Not from me, but I understand him because we are brothers, and the fear of being burdensome is a bond shared between us like blood and bruises and blue jeans neither one can wear anymore. We both tend to bow out when bowing down goes awry. We both tend to draw into ourselves like wrinkles. We both know telephones aren't happy places. I wish he'd see we have more in common than the surname chaining our hearts together. I tell him this, but he can't see a locket through the skin. I tell him that his skin should not fear the touch of splinters. I tell him they are the price of building beautiful things. I tell him that his spirit is beautiful, and I tell him that he is black, and I tell him that his spirit should be skeptical of tree limbs. I tell him to remember. I tell him to always remember dead leaves, lives behind.